بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to cover just two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today um, They are As-Sami' and Al-Basri Very common, you hear it quite often recited in the Quran إنه هو السميع البسري So Sami' comes from, from the word Sami' is a verb uh, Sami'a means to listen. When you say as-sami'a, it's a particular type of conjugation we call in grammar. It's a particular type of verb which means all hearing. So we hear, we hear sami'a yasma'u, we hear. When we say Allah is as-sami'a, he's all hearing. In other words, his hearing is perfect. His hearing is completely perfect. What does it mean? هُوَ الَّذِي لَا يَعْزُبُ عَنْ إِذْرَاكِهِ مَسْمُعٌ وَإِنْ خَفِيَةٌ that he is the one that nothing is hidden from his perception. In other words, he hears everything, even if it's hidden. Allah hears everything, every conversation that we have, everything that moves, everything that makes a sound, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears it. فَيَسْمَعُ sirra wa najwa. He hears the secret things, private meetings, private conversations. Allah knows about it all. بَلْ هُوَ بَلْ مَا هُوَ أَدَقُّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَأَخْفَى Even things that are more light, more barik than that, more sensitive than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also hears that as well. وَيُدْرِكُ دَبِيبَ النَّمْلَةِ السَّوْدَاءَ عَلَى السَّخْرَةِ السَّمَّاءَ فِي اللَّيْلَةِ الظَّلْمَاءَ Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla wa ala, He hears um, the uh, walking of the crawling of a small beetle or a small ant walking on a, a black ant, walking on a black rock, uh, um, on a very light, in a very dark night as well. So things that we can't see, Allah can hear that as well. Even the crawling of an ant, we can't hear the crawling of an ant, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears that as well. Yeah? So Allah hears everything, things that we cannot hear. Yeah? Allah also hears the one who praises him and he rewards that person as well. Allah also listens to your du'as and Allah accepts your du'a. These are the nights to make abundant du'a in. This is the month to make abundant du'a in. Just in case you think Allah hears the way we do, He says no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears without eardrums, without organs. We need, our ears need to function, right? We need organs to hear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from anything like this. Allah doesn't have a body like human beings. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَسْرِيرِ Nothing, nothing is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَمَا يَفْعَلُ بِغَيْرِ جَارِحَةٍ وَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِغَيْرِ لِسَارٍ Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whatever He wishes without a physical body. Allah doesn't have a physical body like we have. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ And like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks without a tongue. Right? Having a tongue is a deficiency, if you think about it, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need a tongue. We need a tongue, otherwise we can't talk. We need a body, otherwise we can't function. Right? We need a hand to be able to do things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of any of these, of, of, of these things. وَمَحْمَا نَزَّهْتَ السَّمِيرَ أَن تَغَيَّ تَرِيهِ عِنْدَ حُدُوسِ الْمَسْمُوعَاتِ وَقَدَّسْتَهُ عَنْ أَنْ يَسْمَعَ بِأُذْنَ أَوَالَاتٍ وَأَعْدَاتٍ عَلِمْتَ أَنَّ السَّمْعَ فِي حَقِّ إِبَارَةٍ عَنْ صِفَةٍ يَنْكَشِفُ بِهَا كَمَالُ صِفَاتِ الْمَسْبُوعَاتِ He says when you understand all of these things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you realize that this sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hearing is a most perfect form of hearing and because it's not in need of any hearing aids Allah does not need anything Allah hears perfectly Allah hears perfectly even when we hear something we make errors in our hearing Right? We can make mistakes in our hearing. We attribute something to somebody which actually they never said. Right? We can't remember what was said just this morning. Right? We don't remember everything accurately. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears everything. Jalla wa ala. Tambi lil abdi min hissu hazdum fi sum. But we can have some sort of hearing that is comparable. Never, never like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَكِنَّهُ قَاسِرٌ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَدْرِكُ جَمِيعَ الْمَسْمُوعَاتِ بَلْ مَا قَرُبَ مِنَ الْأَصْوَالِ He says Allah has given his hearing, but we can only hear things that are close by. We can only hear things that are close by. ثُمَّ إِنْ إِدْرَاقَهُ بِجَارِيَةٍ وَعَدَاتٍ وَعَذْرٍ لِلْآفَاتِ But we can only hear things that are close by to us, and only then 
is when our functions are happening, when our ears are working properly. Even then, when it's working properly, then we can hear as well. فَإِنْ خَفِيَ الصَّدْ قَصُرَ عَنِ الْإِدْرَاقِ But if someone's whispering, you can't hear it. Right? So we can hear sometimes, but it's limited. He says, وَإِنْ بَعُدَ لَمْ يُدْرَقْ But if someone's really far, you can't hear them. In fact, if someone raises their voice, that will destroy your eardrums. Right? So our, we, our hearing is limited, it's very vulnerable, and it's weak as well. And as we get older, and Allah protect us, we start to lose or weaken, uh, it becomes weaker our hearing abilities, right? Some people lose it sooner, right? Because of certain professions that they go, it's very well known in certain professions, and uh, the likelihood increases in those professions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our hearing intact. Then he says, what's the, what's the way to bring it into your life? Listen to this, this is the most important part for us. And ya'lam, that you know, number one, anna Allah ta'ala sami'un. You should have it in your heart with conviction that Allah is sami' and so therefore you guard your tongue. Allah hears everything that you say, so therefore guard your tongue. Guard what you say, watch what you say, watch what you talk about, what you text about nowadays, right? Because Allah is Sami, Allah is hearing everything that you say. وَالثَّانِي أَنْ يَعْلَمَ أَنَّهُ لَمْ يُخْلَقْ لَهُ السَّمْعِ إِلَّا لِيَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَكِتَابَهُ الَّذِي أَنْزَلَهُ وَحَدِيثَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَيَسْتَفِيدَ بِهِ الْهِدَايَةَ إِلَى تَرِيقِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَلَا يَسْتَعْمِلُ السَّمْعَهُ إِلَّا فِيهِ And he says the second thing is that your hearing should be only used for to listen to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You hear the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, by extension, anything that you need to hear. You should not be listening to things that are haram or that are not beneficial for you. So we need to ask ourselves that in the month of Ramadan and outside of the month of Ramadan, what do we listen to? In our cars, on our headphones, you know, on our TV sets, whatever it is, what are we listening for? Because if we're not listening to what Allah was, has created it for, then we're misusing that gift that Allah has given to you. That you'll be asked if you're hearing people backbiting, right? You might say, Marana, I never said anything, I was just listening. That's still haram. Even listening to something bad about another brother or sister, that's haram as well. So, this hearing, this gift that Allah has given to us, what do we use it for? What do we use it for? This is very, very important to bear in mind. The f second one is Al-Basir, very similar to one before, Al-Basir, Basara. Basara means to see, right? It has a deeper meaning actually because um, one is to see with the physical eye, one is to see what you're seeing right now uh, with the physical eye, but one is to also see with the eye of the heart, to see deep within. Some people have this sifat, like Allah has given it to them, that they're able to recognize like what people are really like. Basri, like they have this deep foresight, insight into things. You know, when they meet someone, they can tell what this person is going to be like. This person is going to be trouble for me. <laughs> this person is going to be very beneficial. So Allah blesses certain people uh, with this foresight or insight into things. That's why we say insight. We have the word sight in there. Can you see? Foresight, insight. The word sight is already there. But it's a different type of seeing, not physical seeing. Most people are only limited to physical seeing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-basir, which means he's all seeing. He sees everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he sees everything, even everything beneath the ground. Insects crawling in the ground. All of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing, watching all of them as well. Deep in the ocean where at a certain depth, sunlight no longer reaches that place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the fish that are swimming in there. Allah knows all of this, Allah sees all of this. Allah sees within your heart, the blood pumping throughout your body, your heart beating, these things you can't see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to see everything within that as well. The tiniest, the atoms, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. And the things that we can only see with microscopes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing all of that as well. وَإِبْ صَارُهُ أَيْذًا مُنَزَّهُنْ أَنْ يَقُونَ بِحَدَقَةٍ وَأَجْفَانٍ He says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He sees, He doesn't see the way we do with eyelids and with pupils, these organs, Allah is free from all of these things. Because again, when it comes to Allah, these are deficiencies, right? These are seen as deficiencies because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need organs. He doesn't need body parts like we have. He says he doesn't need retinas. You know we have a retina in our eye which takes in light and then certain processes happen and eventually we make sense of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of any of these things, right? We can only see when there's daylight or light. Without light, we can't see anything. 
There's so many things that we cannot see purely because there's no light. When we look into space, all we see is a glowing, but we don't see all the other matter. They call it dark matter. We won't go into it. But there's lots of things out there that we can't see. So actually what we do see is very limited compared to what exists. Like even scientists tell us this. Compared to what we see, right? We see a tiny amount physically with our eyes, but in reality, there's so many things that are hidden from us that are in plain sight, but we're not able to see them. Mm -hmm. This is a bit of bad in mind as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from any organs. He doesn't have eyes. He doesn't have eyes like we have. He doesn't have hearing like we have. Laysa kamithlihi shay. Nothing is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa sami'ul basir. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seeing and all hearing as well. Okay. So this is something to bear in mind as well. And this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of seeing is beyond anything that we can imagine. Right. Allah sees everything. Every movement smallest movement every star every planet every ant every atom every insect allah is watching over all of them allah is watching us right now as well allah knows what's going on in your heart as well what you're thinking in your mind your your your, your perceptions your thinking your intimate thoughts allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of all of these things as well but our seeing is very limited as well. Allah has given us some sight, but even then the Shaykh mentioned that we have very limited seeing as well. Right? For me, for example, if I take my glasses off, I can't see much. I'm literally incapacitated without my glasses, right? I can't read anything, right? Allah protect us all, but I'm completely dependent on my glasses now or contact lenses. So this is Allah reminding me that you know, this is a gift I've given to you, the qadr of it as well. Uh, right? We cannot see very, very far. Uh, we need binoculars, and even beyond that, we can't see too far ahead. And we need instruments that can help us to see further. But even then, that's aid, that's aiding us. But beyond certain things, we cannot see as well. If you look at, uh, we don't have time to go into this, but if you look at what the Hubble tel Telescope looked at, when they looked into space once, there was a famous clip. You might have seen it. It took an image of a 50p piece equivalent into space. Uh, this much space, I think it was. It looked into space. It was, it's one of the most powerful telescopes created by human beings. You should look into it. And it took an image, just a small image like this into space. And what it found was fascinating. It found billions of stars. The image that it produced, this is small, like it just looked into space this much. You'll find it on the internet if you Google it, if you don't believe me, but you should watch it. And, it, and the images that it processed and it came back with billions of stars, just in a small space. Mm -hmm. So look how much we can't see. Now, we can't even see like majority of the stars in the sky. And this is just talking about the stars in the sky, what else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created that we do not know about as well. So this is something to bear in mind. How do we bring this sifat in our lives? Two ways. Number one, Number one is that when you look at things, you only look at things that is permissible for you, i.e. you look at the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You look at the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, some of the mashayikh say that when you look at the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention of recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a form of ibadah. So when you go to the Lake District, Mashallah, whenever it's nice after Ramadan, and you should go. Or you go to the countryside, you should use the intention that you're going out, but you're also going to look at the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, because you see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call this in theology, the teleological signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see everything is so perfectly ordered, you come to the conclusion that there must be a creator. This can't be haphazard. Uh, nothing happens just by chance. Right? Who created these? wonderful creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you see around you in this month of spring and in summer as well. So this is what Allah has created you for, to uh, see the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look at the ajaib in malakut wa samawat, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the world in such a beautiful way. It's a different matter that we're destroying it now as human beings, but Allah has created the world beautifully. Right? When you see the rivers, uh, the rivers and the lakes, the deserts, the mountains, all of these things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and you realize that this must be from some awesome power who is beyond anything that we can really comprehend. Okay. The second thing that we should do with this gift of seeing as well and يَعْلَمَ أَنَّهُ بِمَرْئِن مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَمَسْمَعِن That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you at every moment of your life. فَلَا يَسْتَهِينُ بِنَظَرِهِ إِلَيْهِ And he should not underestimate Allah is watching him. 
So you know, if, you're, if you're tempted to steal something, if you're tempted to look at something, know that Allah is watching you. And you might make a bit more money right now, but when you stand before Allah, it will be made clear. Right? In fact, we should do the opposite, and we should be secretly doing good things. Secretly, we should be doing good things so that people don't even know about it because we want to build up our ikhlas. Uh, one of my teachers, I won't mention his name, I know for a fact, he's an imam, I know for a fact that when the masjid is empty, he goes and cleans the toilets himself. Imam Maziki, Imam Bankar. Uh, this is what some ulama are like, some pious people are like, that nobody even knows uh, about their secrets. That they would do things when everybody's gone to sleep, and they would do uh, ibadat, and they would make fikr for the ummah, but nobody else knows. So actually we should be doing things to only please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because my Allah is watching me and I want to please my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَخْفَى عَنْ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مَا لَا يُخْفِي عَنِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَهَانَ بِنَذْرِهِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Whoever he says, whoever hides um, things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever hides their bad things from anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet they know that, that Allah is watching them, he says you underestimate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like you're mocking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You think that Allah is not watching you? Is because nobody else is watching you? He says, no, no, no. That's the biggest form of deception that nobody's looking at me. But Allah is always watching what we're doing as well. So this is something to bear in mind as well. He says, this sifat, this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this name of Allah, Basir, is one of the most powerful names in Muraqabah. Muraqabah is basically taking yourself to account. That every believer should sit down every evening or every morning, just for five minutes, do Muraqabah. That you know what have I done with my day today? How have I spent my day today? How have I how am I going to spend my day today? Uh, that Allah's watching me everything that I do when I'm on my phone and I'm scrolling through the web pages or whatever, that Allah is watching me. Allah knows exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, people might not know, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recording everything that I'm doing with my phone. Am I doing good deeds with this, sharing good content, making good content, or am I looking at bad content? Mm -hmm. So this is something to bear in mind. And those people, mashallah, since we're using, using technology more and more, media more and more, you can use media to spread deen. You can use technology to spread the deen like we're doing. Right? And on the day of Qiyamah, it will be hasanat for you. That somebody listens to something we've made, somebody watches something that we've made, inshallah, unki hidayat ke asaba ban jayengi. But at the same time, you can use the very same technology for sharq. People use it for immorality. And that will be a hujja for them, against them on the day of Qiyamah as well. So Allah has given us these wonderful tools, the technology that we have today. How do we use these technologies uh, for the benefit of mankind or to destroy ourselves as well? So this is something that Shaykh mentions as well, uh, that whoever thinks that Allah is not watching him, فَمَا أَضَلَّهُ وَمَا أَكْفَرَ Like, what a lost soul he is. What a lost soul that person is. After knowing that Allah is Sami, Allah is watching you every moment, yet you're continuing to disobey him, this is the greatest form of loss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such to uh, in, enjoy and use this gift of hearing, this gift of seeing. They're one of the greatest gifts. The two really, you know, people who are blind, they will tell you. People who are deaf, they will tell you, right? That you know what, what it's like to be without these things. Uh, so being able to hear is such a great gift. Being able to see something, uh, to see the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to see all these wonderful colors. Uh, this is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we get old and we start to lose our eyesight, my grandfather, for example, he lost his eyesight as he got older in his life. Yeah, towards the end of his life, he lost his eyesight completely. Uh, we saw him, we saw this happening to him. Uh, there are also virtues about people who lose their eyesight later in their life. Allah gives them great reward in the Akhirah. But you know, at the same time, we should do qadr of these things while we have them. So while you're able to see, you know, use it for good, pray Quran, see the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so forth while you're able to hear right now use it for good as well and we'll come back to speaking as well when you're able to speak speak good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak good to people say good things qulu husna say good things to people so Allah give us the ability to uh, first of all recognize these sifat names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secondly Allah give us the ability to qadr of these gifts that we have of hearing and seeing إن شاء الله سبحان الله بحمد سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك إزاك الله